Welcome to the Board Game Bar, where we are going to have a special episode today. I've got David with me. Hey, David. G'day, everyone. Um, and today we're going to be touching on the OGL craziness, the absolute insanity that's occurring within the tabletop RPG system. But we're also going to be looking at how that affects board gamers as well, because we are actually related. So make sure you grab your drink and sit down and we'll go through it all together. So, to go through it today, we are going to be drinking the Hot Toddy. This is our choice of drink for D&D. &D. It is a simple drink, um, and in the vein of 2023, our aim is to make sure we provide drinks for everyone. We actually also have the Warm Toddy. Exactly the same drink, but you're going to be removing the scotch or whiskey component. To make this drink very, very quick and easy, one and a half parts of scotch or whiskey, then you're going to have half a part of honey syrup, a quarter part of lemon juice, fill up your glass with chamomile tea, and then if you want to be a little bit bougie, get that cinnamon stick and cover it with a lemon strip as well. Same for the warm toddy, just remove out the whiskey or scotch. So, jumping into the meat of what we're going to go through. David, do you want to just quickly give your... You're an outsider here, you're yeah. not really an RPG player. As much as we tried to get into there. Yeah. What's your experience so far with D&D &D and RPGs? And yeah, all? so I've had zero experience with D&D &D and I've only had one experience with an RPG system, which was Kids on Brooms. Yes. And we played that uh, in 2022. And so that was my very first experience with an RPG system. Of course, the other thing is I'm familiar with an RPG because I, when I was younger, I, I used to play, um, you know, things like Baldur's Gate, which was uh, on the PC. Yep. So I'm familiar with PC-style RPGs. What I'm not familiar with is tabletop RPGs. And without the tabletop RPGs, you wouldn't have the PC version. Right. So they, are, they owe a lot to it. But as a board game channel, I, I suppose a lot of the viewers probably asking, why are we covering it? Well, D&D &D is something that most board gamers will actually have either played once at least, or know about, or are involved with. That is absolutely unequivocal. We are also part of the same industry. Now, some might argue that we are two separate industries that are just so heavily synergized and have a, a very similar basis that we cover each other. Regardless, we are very interlinked. It's also worth noting that Hasbro and WotC, so Wizards of the Coast, are game board game publishers. So. They put out games. We're not going to go into an argument if they put out good games or not. Let's leave that to the side. <laughs> then we've got actually board games that are published under this OGL. And we're going to go through exactly kind of what it is because some of you might not have seen it. Now, some of you probably are sick to death of it and we're, going to not, we're not going to go into it detail. We're not, I'm not, I don't want David to die from boredom. <laughs> um, but we do want to try and see and break it apart and say, all right, well, how is this going to affect or how could this affect us? And let's probably start with the main thing that I see. And this is my opinion. Again, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. Mm -hmm. But the main thing I see us affecting board games are our local board game shops. Without those local board game shops, none of us would be able to play half the games we would be playing now. Because without those shops, we wouldn't have been able to discover many of the games that are out there. Um, and that's only gotten worse. Yes, you can buy them online. You can... But they still make their money from these big, you know, it's Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and those big IP, they're in every board game shop. Have you walked into a board game shop and not seen it? Oh, look, shout out to our local game shop down the road here, Gas Games in, in, in Pakenham. We, they have a weekly uh, event with a really good community that gathers around, and that's exactly what they do. And they rely on those, that community gathering uh, to bring the community together. Uh, so they have a space, a safe space, a, a fantastic space to be able to do what they love. And without that, that community, if, what we feel, and from what I understand, that community just fades away. And it's not going to be overnight. I don't think it is a, a an overt effect, but it will have an effect. And that's why we need it to actually, we need a good resolution or an outcome here. And that's what we really want to actually try and explore. 
Now, some of the ideas we're exploring here are gonna be more probably business related or more idea or conceptually rated, but hopefully stick with us and, and we'll, we'll get it through. We're trying not to bear down in the weeds, but there is actually one podcast that I would encourage you all to shout out, like to give them a shout out. Mm. Um, we are actually talking to them, so if you you know let us know below, you'd like to hear more from these guys. They are fantastic. They are absolutely knowledgeable, and their podcast is Cosmic Street Corner. And they are, you know, I wouldn't say they're veterans of it, but they are big players yeah. in terms of understanding. You know, I, I think that a lot of I wouldn't you can't credit Jeff to, for instance, Marvel, but there's a lot of ideas that he's brought forward that I don't think would have existed without. And that's the you know you know content and stories traversing and following through different ideas. You know, a book that turns into a board game that turns into it, that's, that's an idea that he calls transmedia that just did not exist yeah. um, 20, 30 years ago. Um, and he's been a big pioneer in that space. Um, and Alan's always known for asking great questions. So hopefully if we can get them on, it would be great to see what that actually mm. What, what they would actually put their two cents in because they are also D&D players. That's right. They're also gamers. So. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. is as an important yeah. note. Um, we also, they're actually one of the, when I first saw this OGL break a, a week and a bit ago, um, they actually, I was listening to a podcast and I was just like, holy crap, I, I remember something, mm -hmm. which was the Maker's Mark debacle over a decade ago. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about the concept of a narrative reversal. And that's kind of what I've listened to in, in the past week when all of this has been unfolding, I'm going, shh. What's it? You need to do a narrative reversal. You need to save the community that you're trying to destroy. So, um, you know, we're going to dive into the narrative reversal, what that kind of means, um, uh, and there's some really, really good content out there. So, before we get into all of that, let's jump into a quick summary because yeah. you've actually come into this pretty unknown. What yeah. do you know so far coming into OGL and hopefully... You know, either the viewers are going, well, I already know that, or, yeah. holy crap, I don't even know what OGL stands for. So, what do you know? Look, only a week ago, I had no idea what OGL meant. Uh, I asked you about it. You were telling me about it. It was uh, from, from the, the, the really the summary that the way I understand it, my impression of it is it feels like profiteering. It just feels like a company is 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 trying to get the best, um, you know, for their for their product or for their company really. Um, trying to get the, the, uh, the you know the most amount of money that they can earn uh, for their IP, and so you know that that's how I understand it. But tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so um, let's go with the the timeline. The murmurs back in 2022 uh, were that changes were afoot and people were getting scared. They were trying to this is you know this is not right. And um, what's he released a statement several months later because nothing had come out. Nothing had come out. There was just murmurs. Um, and uh, what's he said? No, it's all good. Don't worry. Um, and it kind of died away. You know, mm. like it was still there. There was still some. You know, I wouldn't say fear mongering, but there was that that fear element. But it was mostly quenched when they announced it. Then come to January fifth, twenty twenty three, and an official leak of an updated OGL, which they were terming OGL one point one A or one point one, um, sought to make the original OGL, which is Open Gaming License, which is basically a license in which they publish their content or any external publisher could publish their content. It's actually very interesting because even online, people get what it is all about wrong okay. because yeah. it's not, uh, you enter into the OGL by your own volition. But the problem is, because it's been so open, because it has been able to, do what you wanted to do, people were just like, well, why wouldn't I? Because it was this open gaming license. It was yeah. ability to do what you wanted in there and it gave you the that coverage that was able to do there. And this is where the leak, amongst other things, and we could go through our thoughts on the leak, um, got really, really scary because they were talking about making the old OGL not only redundant and not useful, but retroactively applying this new OGL to all of that, that content, which would be disastrous. You can't take books off the shelf. You know, these local bookstores would have to go through all the shelves and take off uh, content that was published on the, the OGL 1.A. Whether they should have published it under the OGL or not, that's a different question. But if it was published on, with the OGL at the back of the book and it hadn't been sold, then these changes would have mandated that they take them off the shelves. 
not a good situation. Because those they're not sending them back. No, they've they've purchased they've purchased that product. the contact like, right. yeah. from from a third party publisher. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not fair for that that local business to not be without the yeah. money. But what about that publisher as well? Like you're sending back the book and I need the money back. Well, no. they're no. getting screwed over as well because they can't make money on this book. So it was it was it was not good. So this this leaked January fifth. Mm. Um, a week went by, no news. There was a I think a vague tweet. But n nothing. Yeah. The community was in uproar. You're getting millions of views on YouTube uh, channels. There's blogs. There's they're going nuts yeah. everywhere. And then they cancelled one of their live their videos earlier in the week. I don't know exactly when, but um, when they actually cancelled their second video, which was scheduled for the Friday, the thirteenth. The community says, well, you know, this is eight days after the leak. Complete silence, eight days after the leak. They're meant to have the video. They cancel it and they bring up a very vague, I would say poorly written, okay. um, statement on their DMD Beyond. So DMD Beyond is a subsidiary. I don't believe it was started by them. I think they pro procured them. I would okay. need to do the research. So it started but... as like a fan. Uh, it started as a, yeah. yeah. So yeah. DMD Beyond is a, yeah. like it's, a, it's an app that you can use while playing DMD okay. or things. So, um, but it is their cash cow. That's where they make most of their money because it's a subscription model. It's okay. a technological solution to what usually is a pen and paper or hard kind of mm. thing. So it's it's usually their best means of getting out there because, you know, that's where most of their users, their current and, and big fan base is. Um, and there's a few key things that, that I want to touch on before we go into our thoughts on the OGL on itself because this update was... A slap in the face to anyone that was reading it outside of probably the executive that published it and the PR. They really need to go back and look at, you know, do they even know D&D? &D? Um, because I'm a casual player. I play it for fun and I do it every now and then when I can find the time because it is a time intensive um, uh, thing. And I have family with who play sport yeah. and craziness. But there was things saying things like it was a draft. And I was like, well, that's great. If it was a draft. The same day the leak happens or the next day when you find out, you go, sorry, everyone, this came out and it was a draft. You don't wait a week and say yeah. it was a draft. It was a, but then that was, that was the, you know, insult mm. was the, you know, them trying to say, and they were trying to talk about values. And I was like, none of those values showed through in what they were proposing yeah. a change. I was yeah. like, uh, you've mentioned three values that you're trying to address. We're not going to go into that. There is a great video on that. But before I tell you that video, the thing that got me was their statement of, we roll the one. That is not even how you use your own system. <laughs> like D&D, &D, you roll the one. What, see, what do you believe you roll the one in? Uh -huh. What stat? Because I really, really want to know. So here's an example of how I am going to respond to that message. What's he rolled on that one charisma saving throw in their attempt to cover up their failed stealth roll? <laughs> See how you do it? <laughs> so this is why I haven't played D&D. Because none of that sentence made any sense to me. But I know that, look, you can, you can tell from Dan's reaction here that this is a major stuff up of epic proportions. They didn't control the narrative. They didn't control their own messaging and they didn't control their fan base. And so, you know, it sounds to me like it was a massive stuff up. Yeah, and yeah. so we're not going to go much more into the, the releases. So Bonus Action, their YouTube channel, they did a good video on it. Um, and D&D &D Shorts did a good video on it. Um, so check them out. They go into that release and they kind of break down all the different elements. Um, I wish they kind of like one of the things and probably why we're releasing this video both because it does impact board games and we want people to actually be recognizing that but the other is that we actually need a good outcome here we need what C and Hasbro to realize that what they've done hurts them more than just them it doesn't just hurt their bottom line it doesn't just hurt their sales because that response kind of came out after they took a hammering in their YouTube subscriptions where people just started unsubscribing their dnd beyond numbers went down i would imagine yeah. and they started losing a lot of money so 
that's kind of what we want to really kind of go down into. So first, let's quickly break down what the OGL leak covered, um, and then let's look at what we want to cover, and that is the path forward, because we need WOTC to succeed. We need Hasbro to succeed in reversing or you know, looking at this from a different eye that doesn't destroy not just TTRPGs, because it, like, it won't destroy, but they will destroy themselves. Yeah. But, but it does affect our board games, because we need to have that or recognize that our industries, if not the same, actually do, um, com, com, you know, not compete, they synergize yeah, they with each other. They complement each other. Yeah, yeah. complement each yeah. other. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so so in the actual OGL itself, the original agreement gave you the ability to create content, publish under that license, um, and then reference back to um, other content as well. So it gave you, basically gave you this ability to publish um, D&D content um, and grow the community because D&D was so successful because people were growing it themselves. Mm. And then this gave great framework to doing that. Um, and sorry, just before you continue, but that, that content that people are producing is monetized, isn't it? So yeah, people yeah. So, are making the content, they're selling the content. And I'm going to imagine it's things like books, things like... Yeah, you know, yeah. So, so there, yeah, there is yeah. a separate agreement that yeah. is their fan agreement. Yeah. So for instance, if I was, I really liked one of their artwork, I could print that, put it on a shirt, yeah. I'm not selling it, so therefore it's covered under the fan agreement. But any time that I want to sell content that was under uh, that 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 uh, mm. was to do with D and D, now I couldn't use their image in terms of selling it because that's a copyright infringement. Yeah, that's not covered. That's a separate thing to to the OGL. But the OGL does give you certain permissions to do various different mm. things. But it's actually very interesting, and, and uh, if you haven't already watched the Legal Eagle video, so he's another YouTuber that's covered the OGL leak itself and kind of goes into some of the more interesting parts of copyright trade la trademark law and really OGL isn't something that you absolutely require yeah. and that's important to note we don't fully require the OGL but it is an important thing that anything that has been published under that if they retroactively changed mm -hmm. would be affected now mm -hmm. there's also arguments that they can't retroactively change it so will steer clear of yeah. those. Um, there's also concerns that we have around unreasonable timelines. So effectively, the the prevailing narrative, um, whether true or not, uh, is that they issued these documents out and gave a week for publishers to sign them. So basically saying, mm. we're going to fuck you. Here is an NDA. You can't talk about it, but you have to sign it by end of next week. Otherwise, you're fucked. Yeah. Now, yeah. if that happened, that's dog act yeah um but whether it happened or not that's the narrative that's out there so that's the narrative they need to talk to mm. and that's where that stealth role comes from because that you know well this is what you know it comes back to and i'm, I'm not in any in any way connected to the industry whatever but in, in the industry that i'm in if you don't control the messaging if you don't control the language that is in your field if you don't look after your own product and look after the language and the way that you want your product to be perceived and, and, and portrayed, then that will be created anyway. And who's going to create it? It's going to be the fans. And if that negative, if they create a negative messaging, a negative narrative around you, then that will that will be the one that people will go with. Well, that's, that's actually you know? where I think the challenge that they face here is actually a modern business challenge in yeah. that you can't control every narrative anymore. Because there are so much more. That's the, the, your fan base is bigger than you are. Yeah, they are. They like there's millions of people that love and play D. &D. But coming back to the draft idea, you know, this idea that there's a draft, a leaked draft, yeah. straight away. It's, it, I mean, it would be. If, I mean, every major business would know that as soon yeah. as that happens, you have to get out there and yeah. you have to correct. If it, it was a draft, yeah. But the fact that they didn't get out there in a, in 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 a day, even yeah. two days, yeah. was much. That's not a draft. Yeah. That's them going. Can we sue? Them? That let it go, or you know, yeah. there's there's so many things involved in that. Yeah. So there's there's a there's too many things that stack up that just go either you're very incompetent, yeah, or you're just trying to come up with the best lie possible. Yeah. So yeah, and that's the you know, it, it there's a lot of things. Uh, Legal Legal goes into a good video of it. There are some other content creators like uh, so Bonus Action as well goes into some good stuff on it. But the one thing that I see that hasn't been mentioned a lot of, but it's kind of like, it's the unspoken, oh, everyone just knows this. But for the non 
RPG players out there or for the non-board game, for the board gamers that don't play RPGs. There's a, there's a history of editions of D&D. Third edition came out and that's when OGL came out. That was back in 2000s. I think it was early 2000s, if not 2000. Um, and the OGL basically it made it open. That is one of the most played. That and 3.5, the, the most, you know, they were the most played. Then four, edi- fourth edition came out and they didn't use the OGL. They used something else called the GSL. Um, and guess what? No one talks about fourth edition yeah. because it sucked because no one could create content for it because the licensing was a nightmare. Why would you do that? So then fifth edition came out in 2015, I believe, 2015, 2016, and it exploded. Like the, uh, it reused the OGL. Am I making a pa- comparison? Yeah, I am. Let's yeah. be honest about yeah. it. It's a, like, how can you not associate the success of D&D with the openness that was the OGL. So there's a pattern there. And and Wizards of the Coast probably know this. They probably do innately. Um, and that's why they're trying to do this. They're trying to sneak the, uh, the, 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 the changes under the, under the radar because one D&D is coming out, sixth edition, one D&D, whatever you want to call it. The next edition of D&D is coming out and they wanted to make sure that they weren't getting left out of the pie. So tell me what the implications are, because for somebody like yourself, like, let's say, for example, you were making content, you've produced the content, and you are looking to sell it. You've, mm. you've made it, you've written it, you've done that. You are looking to sell it. What are going to be the implications for someone like yourself? So realistically, I think that, we're, that that's entering into an area where no, nothing's probably, like, yeah. very few is going to change now, yeah. because... The community is spoken and wizards yeah. are shit scared. Does, yeah. That doesn't mean that the, the game is over because or the, the, that, that particular fight has, has been won because yeah. they still, in their updates, still kind of mentioned that something was going to happen. So it's just like, well, you know, so rather than being OGL 1.1, they're kind of mentioning of being an OGL 2. And it's like, well, no, because like if they change anything that 5e, so the concern here is if they change anything to do with 5e, mm. Well, that's still f- because if I'm doing a campaign right now on Kickstarter, or, or is my campaign just doomed to be f- because yeah. if it's successful, I have to pay Wizards of the Coast. Now, they're saying that they've removed all the money aspects, but this new agreement, they can't see or don't know about until after their campaign's finished. Yeah. And they don't, you know, once you finish a campaign, you've still got six months to a year of actually publishing to get this book into people's hands. How much are you going to get screwed over in that meantime? Yeah. So it's, it's you know... That's the big issue on the table, and we can touch on that pathways moving forward. Because I'm guessing that somebody like, like Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro, they, they're going to enter this. I, I'm imagining. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I can I can see their train of thinking, which is, oh well, we will just change things at any notice, whenever we like, with, that's with one a of the fairly drives. short yeah. notice, and just say, right, okay, we've made a change on, oh, and that's going to impact you, and it's going to impact you in 30 days. Yeah, Something and that's like what that. the draft was. That was part yeah. of what the draft yeah. was yeah. about. Yeah. You know, yeah. They could make those changes. So yeah. um, in their update, they said that they're not going to be... But the problem is we can't talk about the potential changes that could affect because yeah. there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Um, and hopefully there will be nothing to talk about because Wizards just say, no, that was a f- up on yeah. our part. You know, we rolled an at one stealth check and now we're just going to accept that the OGL is there. Yeah. Yep. But like, if we, if we look at what they could have done, well, yeah, if uh, before, like as soon as the leak occurred, get out there, make sure that everyone knows this is a draft. We're open to um, ideas and suggestions. Please let us know. Here's the draft. Bang. Hmm. Um, they didn't do that. So, all right, well, before that, could they have done something different? Because, yeah, Hasbro is like, well, D&D is under monetized. That's been the big conversation, especially last year. D&D is under monetized because Wizards of the Coast don't make as much money from that IP because everyone else is making money instead. Um, well, how about you go out there, and, and this is where probably the good example is, is, is Maker's Mark. So Maker's Mark, about 10 years ago, had an issue in which they're, you know, making whiskey is a, it's a long process. Yeah. It, it takes about five to six years, and they had a huge demand. They had more demand than they had supply, um, and they came up with a plan, they did everything internally, they tested it, they made sure it was like, oh, it doesn't taste any worse, or, uh, but we're gonna water down the product. And absolutely blew up, mm. blew up in their faces because the whiskey connoisseurs out there were just like, well, 
we don't have it over ice because we don't want our whiskey to be watered down, but you're saying it's okay to water down. Like, yeah, big f up, yeah. big f up. Um, and it took them too long to respond. And this is going back 10 years, it took them too long mm. to respond. I think mm. it took them a week. Um, but then they actually just said, no, we were f idiots about it, and mm. we're just going to roll it back. Yeah. We're just going to not do that change. Our whiskey's going to say at the same proof, we apologize. What's probably happened is the demand for it has gone down because less people are buying it. So they're not going to have the issue, <laughs> short term issue they thought they were going to have. But long term, they were able to recover and they were able to get back. Um, and, you know, they chose a different path. But they could have come to their community and said, we have this problem. What do you think we should do? Yeah. Because, you know, there are other options out there. Rather than watering down your product and changing the entire product, we'll just create a spin-off and say, all right, well, we're going to use a quarter of the current product we have and we're going to water that down, but we're going to be labouring at Maker's Mark lighter. Yeah. and make, like, Come uh, up with a better name. Yeah. I'm not a lame wizard. That's why I'm not a good <laughs> yeah. DM. But, like, <laughs> you know, we're going to use a portion of, of the existing that is limited anyway. Yes, it's going to create it even more limited, but then we're actually going to be able to create another product that is going to be less limited because we can turn that 20% into 80% because we've just done this slight alteration, which we don't believe alters the flavors, but for those people that care, there you go. Yeah. And this was actually something that was done at the same time by, I think, Wild Turkey. So it wasn't even out of the realms, but they didn't. They, they thought they had the solution. They went in straight into solution mode. Um, but if they turned around their community and say, we love creating a Watsi, and this is going back to the Watsi, if, if this is the coast, turn around the community and say, we love creating content for you, but we can't do that with all the third part of publishers actually taking ideas. And one of the, you know, the, the hardest thing, and I can completely understand this being a hard thing, they might have worked for a year because they're a big company. It takes a while to do something on a project. Yep. And someone releases their, their content that is eerily similar. That can happen. Guess what? We were talking about AI art before. All ideas come from the same place. We're reusing ideas over and over and over yeah. and over again. And AI is just the example of that. But they can't then release the content because that's so eerily similar that they're now stuck in a place. And if they release that content, that publisher is going to sue them because, yeah. like, so it's just like, well, like, they could still do it and say, well, we've got a strong legal case that we know that it's not copied and we know that it's not. Yeah. Um, so, like, they could defend it, but that's a, a cost associated with defending their, their IP. So, there was, you know, and there were things in OGL that they were saying, well, that's what we we're trying to address. Yeah, I can see that being a real going concern, but you don't do what you did yes. yeah. to cover it. Yeah. Uh, and that's the big kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, obviously, this video is getting a bit long. We want to try and keep it short. What are some of the things that we think the community can do, that publishing creators can do, and that Watsi and Hasbro can do? Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have any ideas before yeah, I well, start? Look, to, I mean, to my mind, you know, and I'm interested in a lot of other, uh, you know, big fan, you know, like, you know, whether it's, whether it's to do with Marvel content or whether it's to do with, you know, whether it's a Star Wars universe or whatever, we know that there is a big fan base that likes to put together, whether it be fan art, fan stories, whatever it may be. And, and look, I, I'm all in favour of those people, those creators who created that product to get paid for that. Mm. I'm all in favor of that. Um, what I'm not in favor of is massive organizations coming over the top and saying, uh, we're gonna take, whether it's a margin or some sort of cut from what you're doing, whatever, just because it actually puts off, off your fan base. It discourages that, that uh, thriving community that already exists. And it's, it actually makes them an enemy of sorts. It creates an us versus them rather rather than an us and an us. You know, rather than bringing the community together, it actually starts to pull it apart. And I think it has an impact, like we were talking about earlier, about you know your local local game shop, where on every Thursday night they all gather around, and if they can't create their own content, if they can't make up their own uh, stories, their own uh, their their own universe, their own worlds, their own characters, and so on. If they can't do that, or if they can only do that with the the threat of some sort of you know extra financial burden, well, well that that creates a divide of that community. So so I think that that's where I'm really worried about. That's yeah. that's what worries me from what you've told me. And and I think for for me, I think 
yeah, that three three pronged approach within the community, um, there is for me, there's an apparent danger of cancel culture. I I think that cancel culture is, um, it can be used as a, as a tool, but in most cases, it's a weapon that is you know destructive. Mm -hmm. um, so using it wisely, I think so far it has been used wisely. Cancelling your um, subscription to D&D Beyond, that's more than fine because it's very easy to pick up and uh, clearly what's he got the message because they lost a lot of money overnight. Yeah. Um, but what I don't agree with is, no, I'm not going to buy the content. I'm not going to be... Nine times out of ten, you're buying your content. Actually, I don't even know if you can buy directly from Wizards, but you'd be more likely buying it from a small business or from a, a an online business that's probably still a small business just doing it online instead of in a, in a bricks and mortar. Um, and... Not buying their content means that that the, the, that that you know D and D stuff means that doesn't actually hurt wizards. No. That these shops have already bought that content; they're not going to get their money back from wizards for that f up. So I'm not saying go out and buy their content like, because we do, we still don't want to support them. But don't say I'm never going to buy that, that stuff again, or I'm never going to support them. You're actually hurting yeah. the local businesses as well as all the great people at what's the that are doing an amazing thing. Like they are, there's probably people in there that are fighting, championing, trying to get, you know, things changed. You can't just treat them all with the same slave. Yeah. So council culture, please, please, please avoid it because we need them to actually show how it's done and council culture does one thing. It closes the conversation and they're never going to want to actually say, well, let's reverse it because um, you're not going to like us anyway. Yeah. It, it's it's if you condemn them and say they're guilty, then they're just gonna act condemned and guilty. So let's give them the opportunity and let's touch on what they can do after we touch on publishers. Publishers, mm. they're 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 in the middle. They're actually the ones getting hurt here, and, and and that's the hard part because they're probably also the ones that have to stay silent because the likes of Critical Role and and, and Dimension Twenty aren't so much locked into OGL, but like. People are criticizing them for, for, for not speaking up. They probably can't. Yeah. They just yeah. probably can't. And unfortunately, they've probably got a whole bunch of books and content, you know, uh, and, and I've been watching a couple of others that have publi uh, published under the OGL. Yes, they could go back through that book, remove that OGL license, and go through the book to make sure that it doesn't have any copyright material in there that would be, you know, yeah. make them liable. But that's a lot of work and that doesn't solve the problem that they spent heaps of money doing something that's now going to sit and waste on the shelves, not to mention the environmental impact. So um, we need to support those publishers. So that's who, yeah, you, you want to buy some, some content, buy it from them now. Because guess what? OGL hasn't changed, so get it now while it's actually still there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for Watsi Hasbro, please research, have a look at Jeff Gomez, Alan Berkson, um, Cosmic Street Corner, learn what a, a narrative reversal is, actually stop, think and say, is this going to be good for us or should we just stop and then, uh, you know, find something and start working towards measures of repairing it um, and stop releasing crappy half hour statements that, guess what, you have some amazing DMs in, in your service and yet you release that crap. So please actually start the process of repairing and actually, you know, I, I think for publishers what they really want is that guarantee that the previous OGL is not going to be made redundant because that is the scariest thing. I can't imagine the fear for them of having tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of material that, that they've actually created that is at the moment potentially going on a bonfire. Um, and that is just not a good place for them to be. So please, please stop your man ma madness and insanity. Actually start the healing process. And for board gamers out there, make sure you support those friends that you do know are in RPGs. If you didn't know more about this, make sure you're actually talking about it because it will have an impact on board games. Whether we like it or not, it will have an impact on where we get our board games. The creators, like a lot of the creators we get, get their income from this or they yeah. get their... You know, these aren't big businesses, with the exception of what's in Hasbro, yeah. that are being impacted. And if we don't actually get out there, we don't have that conversation constructively in a way that actually starts the healing process, then we're never going to get through it. That is my thoughts. Yeah. Um, 
So, I've almost finished my drink. So have I. Um, thanks for joining us on this special episode of Board Game Bar. Um, let us know if you do want to actually have that uh, conversation with Cosmic Street Corner. I excluded the the. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah we're, hopefully we'll be able to get them on the channel. Um, we might even do it as a live stream so you can actually um, be part of the conversation. Because yeah. um, realistically, I think that's the journey forward. That's what we need to be doing is having those constructive conversations. I think that could be a great way to start. Yeah, and, so. and visit your local game shop. Visit your local bookshop. Grab, grab these products while they're there. Support them. They're there. They're small businesses. They're trying to make a living. Um, get out there and support them and uh, enjoy. Enjoy being around with friends and having a laugh and having a game. That's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. So make sure that you drink responsibly and game wildly. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. See you later.